Good morning, beloved of the Lord. Uh, sitting here doing a little study. Uh, we're doing, I'm on a uh, group has invited me, graciously invited me into their uh, fold <laughs> uh, called the I'm a Whosoever's, which I just love that name. It's led by Bruce, and he has uh, got a channel called I'm a Whosoever. And we, we're doing some... Uh, uh, some videos on the spiritual warfare you can go to his channel i would encourage you to check it out i'm a whosoever and then you can also if you just want to watch the video you can watch it on my community uh section in in my channel i don't know how to upload it because <laughs> i'm technologically uh not so good but uh i figured uh uh We've been doing a lot of study on it, and so I wanted to identify our main enemy, and that would be uh, Lucifer or Satan or the beast or the dragon or that old serpent or whatever you want to call him. And uh, so, of course, we're going to go to Isaiah and Ezekiel and Revelation just real quick, and uh, let's identify this guy and see what's going to see how what the Bible has to say about him. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 14, and starting in verse 12, he says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Uh, notice the I wills in this little section of scripture. Uh, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. <coughs> in uh, this chapter, in this verse, we get his ideas. We're not ignorant of the wiles of the devils. This is what he wants to do, folks. This is his objective. He wants to ascend to heaven. He wants to exalt his uh, throne. He wants to sit on the mountain of the congregation. He wants to ascend above the heights of the clouds. And he wants to be like the Most High. So you kind of got his motive there, don't you? Now, if you go to uh, Ezekiel 28, we'll see what God's will is a little bit about this guy. Let's see, where am I here? Okay. Ezekiel 28, and uh, starting with verse 13. You always got to watch them 13, don't you? He says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. And the workmanship of thy tabards, and listen to this, of the pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. He was created with pipes in him. Devil likes his music, doesn't he? Uh, verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, I have set thee so. Thou hast, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire thou wast perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee uh, by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence Devil likes his violence, don't he? And thou hast sinned, therefore, now this is God's eye wills. I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Uh... Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy 
brightness. And listen to this. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before the kings that they may behold thee. All these guys that worship him, they're going to see him fall. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Uh, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All you guys that just think Satan's the greatest thing in the world, uh, that's God's I wills. That's what God's will is. We learned in uh, Isaiah what Satan's will was, and what now we learn in Ezekiel what the Lord's going to do to him. And while we're at it, let's just go on over to Revelation and figure out, see what's going to happen to this guy. I'm going to flip over to uh, Revelation 19, but I, just for a second, I'm going to go back to 13. Uh, at the peak of his reign, uh, this is going to be during the uh, tribulation area where the beast is reigning, and he says, uh, Revelation 13. I was watching 13, brother, <laughs> and... Uh, You know what, I'm just going to start with uh, verse 16. And he caused us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their ha right hand or in their foreheads. Notice it's in, not on. All the other Bibles say on. King James got it right. It's in their hand or in their forehead. I don't know if it's a chip or what it is, but it's going to be in your body. And that no man might buy uh, or sell, save he have the mark. Now listen, it's three things. It's not just one. It can be three things. Everybody says, the mark of the beast. And that's true. But listen to what the Bible said. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had, that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him uh, that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, which is six, and his number is six hundred three score and six. That's where you get the famous six six six. So he's making everybody take his mark, but the devil's got an end too, and uh, we'll find some of that in. Chapter 19, and this is, uh, praise the Lord, and this is the second advent when Jesus comes, this is not talking about the rapture, it's talking about when he comes and puts his feet on the ground, <laughs> and listen to this, chapter 19, verse 11, and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as the flames of fire, and his head were on his head. He had many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. You say the Word of God's not that important, huh? And the armies which were in heaven followed him. That's us, folks. Upon white horses clothed with fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it uh, he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He's not coming as a babe in the manger this time. And he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be a little ticked off. And he said, and he, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb. So that's when Jesus is coming back. <clears throat> but we're going to try to find out what happened to old Lucifer. And uh, let's see where I'm going to go with this. Uh, okay, let's go to see what happens to the beast. This is uh, verse 19 and uh, 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet uh, that wrought miracles before him uh, with which he deceived them uh, that had received the mark of the beast, and then that which worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And then you got in verse 20, verse 2, he says in uh, well, let's, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hand, and he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. So now he identifies who the serpent was, in Genesis, the book, <laughs> this book is so perfect. Because without this, you really, you'd say, well, who is the serpent? And I mean, we all know that it is Satan, but it identifies him here. He's that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. And then it goes on and talks about the, uh, the last battles. And then in verse 19 or verse 10, he says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's the conclusion of this great cherub that fell and from the beginning of this book to the end, he has deceived mankind. And in our spiritual warfare, we have a captain. We have a victor, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Bible says. But uh, that king, Satan has a kingdom too, and he's in charge of it. Uh, he's the God of this world. So it's good to identify our enemy. Anyway, I hope you got a little something out of this. Uh, the main thing I wanted y'all to notice is in, <clears throat> in uh, Isaiah uh, 14, how it says what, I mean, the devil laid it out what he wants in his eye wills. So we're not deceived by uh, the wiles of the devil. We know exactly what he wants. And uh, it's written down for us. Praise God. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. May uh, uh, the Lord bless you. And remember to study these books, folks. I just love studying the Bible. And uh, pray without ceasing. If you like, go to my community. And you can watch that video. It's a, I think it's only 15 minutes long or so. So it's not very long at all. And uh, or... And check out the I Am uh, Whosoever uh, with Bruce, okay? Have a wonderful day.